Now, obviously, everyone has their own reason for starting a channel, whether it's just a creative outlet or whether it's to, uh, to make money. Um, yeah, so everyone's different. So I'm gonna have a little chat and I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about YouTube and kind of, kind of what I believe it takes uh, to be successful. Now I'm not successful, I'm not a failure. I've only been doing this a couple of years and uh, that I think is probably the key. Um, the key to success is uh, to keep at it and to improve like most things. So when you've sussed out your reason for doing it, um, you kind of have to kind of have to have a goal. Although for me, the reason I made videos um, was to just document what I was doing as a diary. And this is my diary and I talk to it, talk to it like dear diary, you know, and I've got quite a few people out there that quite like to listen to what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, I think it's hard to know why people watch because uh, I don't think it's a particularly good channel this but and I do tend to waffle and I think do, some people just like to be talked to you know like grown-ups and uh, wow it's really dry out here so this channel that I started watching uh, farmhouse renovation and I think the guy's name's Fran put, put it in the comments if, I, if I've got that wrong I think it's Fran and Lorraine and uh, yeah they've been living in France a while and uh, I think they're looking at moving and yeah he was talking about how he felt that YouTube was kind of holding his channel back. And yeah, as I said, I think a lot of people who start their YouTube journey kind of think the same. They go, oh, I'm not doing very well. And what I thought I'd do, I talk about a few channels that are, in my opinion, in this kind of area, in this kind of space, in the renovation type space, um, uh, that I think are absolutely absolutely at the top of their game absolutely fantastic they are and yeah one of them i only come across recently and i think the guy has got see what you understand is you're making you're making a television program every time you make a video you're making a television program and i haven't got a lot of time for television i don't own a television and i don't particularly want to make television programs so i'm never going to be super successful on youtube uh, because I don't actually like what I'm making. I like what I'm doing, but as I say, the reason I'm doing it is because this is my diary. Um, but yeah, this, this channel that I found absolutely fascinating and his filmmaking skills is fantastic is called Off Grid Southern Italy. And I would recommend everyone check it out. Not a huge channel yet, but it will be. Uh, his quality of filmmaking is just off the charts. So yeah, Fran and Lorraine, Go and check out these channels and compare what you're doing to what these people have doing, uh, are doing and you'll see why, why they're having some success and maybe you're not. Although I will say your channel is less than a year old and they do say that you throw your first 100 videos away and I've actually thrown 250 of my videos away out of the I think about 670 videos that I've made yeah you do not want everything out there uh, but you are doing an apprenticeship your first I think the first four or five years at least of your YouTube journey is is an apprenticeship and you have to turn up every day and you have to work absolutely flat out and it is really 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 hard work and you have to know why you're doing it because if you're doing it for the money um yeah you're gonna well you're gonna go broke um this is not a way to make money uh, not from youtube directly you may build up a really uh, loyal audience that will help you out like i have uh, creating my project um but yeah this is not really not really the game to play um if you're in it for the money um and you have to understand as well that i'm in the 95 percent i'm in the 95 percent with you guys um that have less subscribers than what i've got or my subscribers and less around that 5,000 uh subscriber mark uh yeah that's 95 percent around there of youtubers 
So only 5%, one in 20 YouTube channels have more than 5,000 subscribers. So when you see channels with 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, a million, a hundred million they are you know at the top of their game and have been doing it for years and years and years so yeah another channel that i recommend everyone watch because this this young girl is very talented but her effort and her filmmaking skills are off the charts and she makes it look effortless and her name is reza or uh, carissa i think her name is but her channel's called life of reza now she's actually got a background in uh, TV production and filmmaking so it's not like she's just picked up a camera and I think her YouTube channel is about six or seven years old and she's got about 700,000 subscribers and her filmmaking skills are fantastic so the key to success on YouTube and you are guaranteed the weird the weird thing about YouTube is you are guaranteed success you are absolutely guaranteed success. No exceptions. There's no one on YouTube that's amazing, absolutely fantastic, that's failing. N no one. Um, so a bit like a professional footballer. If you are at the top of your game, then you're earning tens of thousands of pounds a week. You are at the top of your game. There's no one playing for their local town who is good enough to play for um, like Manchester United, you know? They're just not out there. They are always found. The cream always rises to the top, which is what is fantastic about, about YouTube. And as I say, it's a creative art, like uh, writing or uh, painting or anything, like playing a musical instrument, you know? Uh, it's not quite the same as playing a musical instrument because there's lots of fantastic musicians <laughs> that, are, that are not in fantastic bands and are not earning lots and lots of money. So it's different in that way. And writing, as, as far as I know, uh, J.K. Rowling, who wrote, did she, what did she write? Whatever she wrote. It wasn't Harry Potter, was it Harry Potter? Lord of the Rings, she wrote one of those. And fantastically successful writer. She approached 12 different publishers with her books um, before she got signed up. So yeah, very, very different, very, very different business that she's in. And being a good writer doesn't guarantee you success. Whereas being a good video maker or filmmaker guarantees you success. So there's one channel that is, again, off the charts, fantastic. And yeah, this, this woman's having fantastic success because of her filmmaking skills and her channel's called Her 86 Square Meters. And yeah, check it out. Uh, I'm gonna put a little clip of her, one of her videos, just a few seconds long, and I'm not gonna edit it, I'm just gonna play it. I'm not gonna play the sound. The reason I'm not gonna play the sound because I don't want a copyright strike. Um, but this little, bit of this little bit of video would have been played over music. So I'm just gonna show you the amount of effort that went in just, just a few seconds of video. Now she's got two million subscribers and she's doing really, really well, earning a very, very good living. You know, she's probably on her way to becoming uh, a, a millionaire. Um, as is another YouTuber who's been doing YouTube for maybe 12 or 13 years, and that's PewDiePie, you might have heard of him, uh, was the biggest YouTube channel on YouTube for many years. Started out just video him, videoing himself playing computer games. Now he's doing all sorts. But this is curious. Now he's got 111 million subscribers. Now on the face of it, that's fantastic. Well, obviously it is, you know, he's doing very well, multi-millionaire, and he's mastered this YouTube game. And but I tend to ignore the subscriber count. I've got about 5,000 subscribers, but it doesn't mean a great deal. I'll talk about that in a second. But he gets around 2 million, views on each of his videos. Now, obviously we'd all love 2 million views because that pays tens of thousands of euros or dollars 
every, every time, you know, every day. He's, you know, he's earning millions of pounds every week, or every, every year, I should say. But two million out of 111 million subscribers is only, is less than 2% of his subscribers are watching his videos. Now I'd be mortified if only 2% of my subscriber base watch my um, videos. I normally get about 2,000, 3,000, sometimes I get 4,000 views on a video, mainly around 2,000, 2,500. And I've got 5,000 subscribers. So the secret, the secret to a successful YouTube career is to be dynamic uh, and kind of interesting, uh, entertaining or informative. So you have to be either entertaining or informative. So you get a lot of channels where there's podcasts or you'll get someone just to talk to the, um, talk to the camera. So that's called a uh, talking head video. You know, like the old school news readers, there's quite a lot of channels like that. And they're, some of them are quite successful, but they're a, a totally different uh, type of channel than the ones I'm talking about. I'm talking about this sort of channel where you're out in the open, you're around nature and you're renovating a house or you're being creative around a property. So if you don't get a lot of views on your videos, it's probably because you're either not entertaining or you're not informative. Um, and it comes down to, it's very ruthless, but as I say, once you're good, I'd love to be good at video making, but I don't really have the patience to do it. I really enjoy chatting to my audience, which is kind of why my channel's growing, I guess. But it will never be a big channel. It will never have a million subscribers. Um, one guaranteed, kind of guaranteed way to get lots of subscribers is to spend lots of money. Like if you go and buy a chateau, there's going to be an audience that are going to watch you spend your money. They love it. Or if you go and renovate or restore an old car. If I went out and bought a Ferrari and started tearing it to pieces, I would get a big following because people love to see people spend their money. And uh, yeah, that's, that's obviously why my channel is quite small as well, because I don't spend a lot of money. So when you're making your videos, if you watch that clip, you'll see how many cuts there were, how many different clips there were in such a short amount of time. Now, that is a sign of amazing filmmaker craft, uh, being able to put clips together really, really quickly because the, the human mind and the, the human eye can see a change of scenery in a fraction of a second. So you don't actually need to have your camera pointed at something for very long to get your message across. Now I've been I've been making a gate this morning and I did I did video the last gate that I made so I didn't record it too much this morning. Um, if you do want to watch me making a gate I've actually edited that video back and it's now how to make a gate uh, and I've edited out all the fluff and that is the key edit out the fluff you don't need any fluff in your videos at all and you need a bit like this you even need to keep the camera moving the scenery moving or you need to keep the clip short. Now, clips should be around between two seconds and six seconds each. And if the clip is longer, there needs to be movement in the clip. That is, that is the secret sauce to making good video. And if you watch that off-grid Southern Italy channel, you'll see that he'll include lots and lots of B-roll. Now this is B-roll, and it's basically, it's video of nothing really that important but it's quite nice and a quite a nice distraction to the rest of the video. And that can be anything. You can zoom in on a, you can zoom in on, on a tree, on a shrub, a cloud in the sky. Anything can be B-roll and it breaks up your, it breaks up your video. So one thing that everyone who makes videos has got in common is they've got an ego. Is uh, we're all driven to do it by our, our ego. And ego is good. It's, um, it's the thing that makes you open your mouth to people that never asked you to open your mouth. <laughs> and sometimes it can get you in trouble if you can't control it. And uh, yeah, I, I often talk about being able to control your ego. And sometimes you'll get a comment in the comment section and it'll be ranty or it'll be moody. And it's basically by someone who can't control their ego. And, but it's, it, it's the thing that makes you creative. It's the thing that puts an actor in front of the camera or an actor on the stage in the theater. It's their ego. Uh, and yeah, once you understand that, that it's a good thing and that you need to explore it and be energetic and entertaining, 
um, yeah, the sky's the limit. So one other thing that's really, really important is your sound. Now, if you watch those channels that I've just spoken about, the sound is perfect. If you listen to me talking now, the sound should be kind of perfect. Uh, it, the sound is, although it's 50% of your video, um, it's probably the most important thing because if your sound is off, people will not hang around to listen. They'll get frustrated and they'll turn off. And it's not just your speaking voice that needs to be clear and uh, sound good. So sometimes the, the uh, microphone on a camera or on a phone, it's just not up to it. So I, th I think mine are about 12 quid, the microphones that I use, and they're really good. And the camera that I use, well, I use old cameras. They were 500 pound when they were new, but they're 12 years old and I pay around 50 euros for them. And I've go, I go through them. I've gone through about five or six, but they're not expensive to buy, but you need a reasonable quality video. So I shoot in HD, which is 1080. I don't shoot in 4K because a 4K file is too big and I have to upload my videos using a mobile phone and the file's too big and I'll soon run out of data. Uh, which I'm going to in the next couple of days, actually. I'm going to have to buy some more data from Orange. So something that very rarely appears on my channel is music. I can't stand music in videos. As soon, as soon as I hear loud music or dodgy music, I switch it off. And that in itself, choosing music, again, if you watch these videos, the music that is chosen for these videos and for each clip is absolutely perfect. And that is a craft. And it takes years to master that craft. You can't just pluck a tune off of one of these websites and, or off of YouTube Music or YouTube Studio and go, oh, that'll do. It doesn't work. Uh, it can spoil the video. So because I'm absolutely terrible at choosing music, um, unless I had a bit of Dire Straits playing in the background, which I think I'd get a copyright strike for, um, I choose no music. And I use instead the background and a lot of the times the background noise is lovely here it's birds and it's just it's just like plain nature and that is actually a draw to a lot of my audience especially in the springtime and in the background now I can hear a road about a mile away with noisy trucks on it because the wind is in this direction so I generally don't I don't film when there's noise bad noise in the background so yeah, making videos is like baking a cake and you're only, gonna, you're only gonna be good if you enjoy baking that cake. There's so many different facets and it will take years and years and years. So it does, it takes years to learn. But if you get the sound right, you get the video right, you know, you get the motion right, you get the dynamic side of things right, always have something going on. Never just, when I was, you know, busy making this cake this morning, um, there was, about 30 seconds where I was not really doing anything. And that type of clip, never include that type of clip in your video where you're not really doing anything. Always have something going on. Anyway, I hope that helps. Never believe, never ever believe that YouTube has it in for you. Uh, and change the word algorithm for audience because the algorithm is your audience. So if you don't get many views, it's because you've got a tiny audience and people are switching off you can uh, look at your data back in your um, uh, YouTube video account uh, in YouTube Studio, and it'll tell you what your it'll tell you what your viewers are doing and when they're when they're going to put the kettle on and when they're staying tuned. Anyway, I think this video is plenty long enough. Very few people will get to the end of this video. I hope that helps, guys. Don't give up. Just remember, nothing's going to happen for years. If you want to stick it out, it's going to take three years, four years. Even Dan at the Chateau, um, Escape to Rural France, I think his channel, he's got half a million subscribers, but he's got to the stage now where he can employ an editor and a camera crew, or if he chose to, um, and he's earning good money. You know, he's earning one or 2,000 euros a video, doing really, really well. But he trained, he studied to do it, and he spent, I think he spent, he spent about six years playing this video game, this uh, YouTube game, so it takes years. So... Yeah, don't criticise your channel until you've been doing it for a couple of years. Anyway, hope that helps. See you later.